Matthew Moore's MM Wood Studio. And in this project, we're gonna build a beautiful hand plane. This is an excerpt from a larger class at my online school, mmwoodstudio.com, where we build an entire set of beautiful wooden body hand planes. We're gonna mix the old with the new. We're gonna focus on preparing the blanks and joint my two sides. If you're not comfortable bringing this down to the exact dimensions, um, and you wanna leave it a little bit fat, that's okay. Here is the blank for my jack plane. Now I've already marked the top here. You can see the grain, even when this is this uh, cathedral pattern is coming in, is coming in this direction. So this is where we're running out. Then on the top, I want to do a cabinet maker's triangle. I've milled this up a little thick, uh, just a touch, and that's on purpose. So the first thing I want to do is get the blade centered. So right here is the blade. So if it needs room to move, then where these two lines are, I need to add additional spacing. So in total, we're looking for about a sixteenth of an inch on either side. You may want to cut in just a little bit farther to this side closer to the edge of the walls than this because you may have to clean material up here on the cheeks as well as in the body itself. So I'm going to reference off of what will be the sole of the plane, joint one face, and then go into planar mode and then I'm going to just lightly touch that body on the other side to make sure everything is nice and parallel and then I will bring over all the cheeks and plane those, just kissing them so I get a nice, even, parallel, uniform thickness across the length of every single one. Okay, for the jack, we have a 12 inch body. I found rough center here, and I went out six inches on either side, and then I made a mistake, and I just didn't mark it right, but we want to be in as five inches from the front, which is right here, so 45 at the five, and then 62 degrees just before it. And with those lines marked out for our 45 and 62 degree cuts, I head over to the bandsaw. Now here's where I go a little off the beaten path. So I'm gonna actually make a second cut, and however, what I'm gonna do first is make sure that my blade is perfectly 90 degrees square. Combining the bandsaw with the table saw gets us about 95% of the way there. Take a piece off of a roll of self-adhesive sandpaper and put that down on something you know is flat. And then you still wanna check this block for square from this face over and this face over. This side right here is just a tad lower than the rest. Take the block, you put it on, you apply even amount of pressure, or if you need to flatten or bring one side lower than the other, you can apply more pressure to one, and you just pull it back in one stroke, lift, and start again. And when you're ready to take this off, the adhesive is going to be pretty well stuck. So what I like to do, let's get a little denatured alcohol. Now we're going to let that sit for a few minutes. And now, we'll start peeling this up. And we're just going to focus on the 45 degree bed. And what we want to do is take our square, draw a line right down the center of this. So now I'm going to take my bed, flip it over, and come out three and three eighths of an inch. So where those two lines intersect, I'm gonna take a punch and make a dimple. So now that we've marked the location and punched the center point where we wanna drill a three quarter of an inch hole with a Forstner bit, which will perfectly house this part of the adjuster right here. And I want to take a measurement for the depth of my adjuster here. So once we're centered, turn the 
drill press on and we'll drill down a hole. I have a three quarter of an inch router bit here and I've marked the edges of the bit where it cuts on both sides. I have a stop and I have a clamp. The first thing you want to do is make a line two inches up from the bottom. And that's really important because that's the total length we're going to cut for the groove. And then while I'm here, I want to bring that line to over and around to either side. Bring down the lines of our three quarter of an inch hole here. Bring across those lines to the sole of the plane. And to set the router bit height, what you want to do is make it just a little bit higher than the total height of the piece of the adjuster that is used to move the blade. Take this mark I made and kind of just eyeball it and adjust my fence in. And then when I'm doing this, I'm going to hold my block down tight against the fence, pushing it down and just push right through the bit all the way till I hit the block. When I hit the stop block, then I'll shut the motor off. And once I get that, you can take a pencil. I'm going to use a pen for clarity. I'm going to draw a line right here. Now what we want to do is figure out where the front needs to be. I'm going to move the blade back until it touches about a sixteenth of an inch up. And then once you have that, draw another line for the position of the front block. And I'm going to adjust my blocks here to the lines and clamp this up. Check the sole. Now here at the drill press, I'm going to use a quarter inch bit to drill four holes on each side for these quarter inch dowels that are going to be the locator pins for the body to the sides. Take a square and bring over a line that shows us where the 45 degree angle starts and ends here on the very top. When I want to get that 45 degree angle and I want to have it continue down. And now what I want to do is take a square set an inch and a half and draw a line all the way across. And what we're looking for is five eighths of an inch in. And right there is where we're going to draw our quarter inch hole and punch a dimple right where those two lines meet. At the drill press here, I have a piece of wood, happens to be maple. I'm going to drill right into this through the body, or through the cheek, through the cutoff, which we'll, we'll pull our wedge from later, and then through the other cheek into this piece of wood. Take a flush trim saw here. Get these nice and flush. Okay, so I have my brass stock here, and what I want to do is bring it up to my plane and make a mark that's about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch longer. So now with my bench hook and a hacksaw, I can come in here and cut this. Slowly remove material from the brass rod until you get it so it's roughly a sixteenth of an inch less in length on each side of the plain body. And then while I'm here, I like to put a little bit of a chamfer on the edge out here. And then with some 220 grit paper, I hit the corners. And I can take my brass rod and push it in. Take the plane apart. So now I want to chamfer this edge here just a little bit. This is where the ramp is for the plane. I have a bunch of clamps here with a dead blow mallet. And then I have um, some System 3 epoxy. Make sure to keep epoxy away from the edges where the plane bed's going to be and from the edge of the front here as well where the shavings come out for the 62 degree bed. Uh, we don't want epoxy coming into our plane. If it does, get some acetone, clean it up right away. So here you can see me taking my square, bringing it up on the pin and taking a look at the distance between the plane bed and the actual pin itself. And to me that looks like it's about 7 sixteenths of an inch. So on my cutoff, I'm going to lay out just a little bit thicker. I'll make a cut to remove this material. 
And then you may want to take a few shavings off just to make it easier to fit into the body. That's it. All I'm doing is hitting the cross pin when I go in. So I gotta bring this down thickness wise. Now you want to get this so that it fits with some tension right now. So mine is just right about there. The next thing we want to do is clean up some of the squeeze out so we can flatten our sole. And then head over to the jointer, make some extremely light passes, referencing against your fence. Make sure your fence is square though, checking your sole to make sure you don't go too far. And I'm going to check for square, and it feels like I may be slightly heavy on this side. Take my hands and grip the plane in the center area right here, and push it forward. And I'm using a little bit more pressure on this side to take material off over here versus over there and to try to square this up. I'm just barely touching that top there. So what I want to do is to start removing material. Now when you do this, you get the file in. You don't want to point down. You don't want to point straight. You want to point up. And you want to go up because you want the shavings to come up. So you're kind of back beveling a little bit. And there we go, I'm right through, perfect. So now we can actually shape the wedge. I came out about three and a half inches. I measured the distance between just before the edge of the plain bed to what looks like about roughly where the center of the brass cross pin is. And right there, I brought up a line. And then I put my blade into the body and I measured distance from the blade to the cross pins and I made a mark. And then I want it to be about you know, an eighth of an inch or so from the bottom part here. And then I took the eighth of an inch mark and the mark I had for the height and I combined or drew a line from those two points. Kind of drew a little bit of a curve here. And now over at the bandsaw, I'll remove the material from the top part of the wedge. And now with my block plane, I'll start cleaning up this taper. And then at the front, I'll round this over. Eventually you'll get the wedge the way you like it. And you'll get that seated. If you need to, knock it in. And you can advance your blade, change the lateral adjustment. And now I'm going to take that piece of maple from earlier. It's been jointed here on the jointer, and let's see what happens. There we go. So the next thing we can do here is to add the lever cap screw. So I spent a few minutes just sanding the entire wedge. To come and make a mark two and seven eighths of an inch back. And then I'm going to mark that center, and then I'll use a punch to make a dimple. I drill a hole all the way through the wedge into something that supports it behind to prevent blowout. And because of how hard the wood is, I took my piece and I kind of just wiggled around a little bit and just made the hole a little bit larger. So I now have my knurled knob, and I've lined this over one of the holes and it's all the way screwed in. That's gonna keep that piece from shrinking. I'm gonna slowly tap this in. All right, so now that's all the way through, but it's protruding. So I gotta take this material off. And the best way I know to do that is over at the sander. Get that in, take my knurled screw. What that does is lift the wedge as the knurled knob extends out through the wedge and applies pressure to the front of the wedge as it meets the blade and the blade meets the ramp preventing chatter. And I brought over some oak. Let's give it a shot. Ah, oh, look at that. There we go. The last thing to do with this wedge is to take a quarter and draw in some curves and take this over to the sander and make those curves. So this jacket is 15 inches long, which is kind of reaching towards the length of a jointer, but nonetheless, the mouth is forward. So what I'm thinking about doing on mine is pushing everything back a little bit. Now, if you have the room, you can go deeper than 12. So here's where 12 is. 
and that would put my blade almost four inches from the front. Pull over my French curve. Now I've got my line here, which is three eighths an inch above my cross pin. Now let's focus on the back. So let's start with a line that gives us something like this. And what I want to do now is get the location the adjuster and transfer it here. And I've already added that quarter of an inch or so depth. So that means my adjuster pocket is somewhere right in that section right here. So we have to leave that adjuster intact. Okay, I like it, but I think we're just a little too low. So let's move it up a little bit. Okay, I decided I wanted to extend the jack out one more inch to 13. So 13's here. And I just took, took that same curve we drew, have it here. Instead of coming up early, I just continued it out. So let's cut it out on the bandsaw. Then over to sander, I'm gonna start cleaning up my saw marks. The idea here is we're gonna start to curve this back. I'm going to uh, chamfer this back edge first so I don't blow it out. Now I'm gonna start with my spokeshave and start chamfering this. As you start increasing this curve, make sure you keep this chamfer up. And don't forget to chamfer the edges of the sole as well. Now I want to start to round over from this second line in to my second line down. So on the front, I've already drawn a line down the center. I'm gonna draw kind of like a circle. I'm gonna do an extremely light champ from the front. We'll put a center line down here too. Halves. Now once that front's in pretty good shape, we want to draw a line down here and on the top of the plane, plus down on this face here. Then I want to do that in this inside corner here, or the inside of the cheeks. Before I get too far, I want to clean this whole surface up right here. Um, you can come in with a round bottom spoke shape. I'm going to do that to start with and take a very light cut. So now I'll use my smoother to clean up my faces. And then I'll throw a slight chamfer on the edges. And then a slight champ from the back here. Here's my big thing too. Don't use too much boiled linseed oil. Um, don't come in here with a brush and just brush it on. What I end up doing was I grab the cloth and I just wipe on a little bit of the finish and that's enough to get that color, that luster, that, that rich tones, the cocoa bowl or whatever wood you end up using out. Too much boiled linseed oil is going to take this thing forever to dry and instead these will dry really quick and you won't have much bleeding back out later on. All right, well that was a great project. I hope that you can get into your shop and build a beautiful hand plane as well. So as always, please subscribe to the channel, share with your friends and hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, hit the like button, share and timeline and head over to the MM Wood Studio page and like us there as well and as always, have a great week in the shop.